Hey guys, we got Bambi TV. Guys, we're going to react to it. Jessica. Guys, we're going to be checking out Chuck Gold against the Norm and host Ramadan Iftar for Muslims. Guys, let's get straight into this. In a world where there is much chaos in the name of religion, the Congregational Church of Batavia in Illinois is setting a beautiful example of interfaith harmony and cooperation. The Church of Batavia, which is a United Church of Christ, hosting a Muslim event might seem very strange and unbelievable, but our video will tell you how this whole idea came to life. In 2017, there was a panel discussion at the Batavia Public Library, where Mazhar Ahmad and David Foxgrover were presenters. Ahmad heads the Batavia Islamic Center, while Foxgrover is a pastor of the Congregational Church. The panel was discussing ways to establish interfaith experiences, as recently there had been much hatred aimed towards the Muslims. A church member is quoted to have said that, For the most part, it's easier to hate someone you don't know than someone you do know. We want people to know that at heart we are all created the same. We share the same concerns, Christian, Muslim, or whatever, for our children, for our safety, for our future, for our well-being, and more. In an attempt to allow communities to get to know each other and foster love and understanding, they decided to hold interfaith iftar at the church. The evening begins with prayers, both the Muslim evening prayers after sunset, as well as Christian prayers. After the prayers, dates and water are provided for the traditional breaking of the fast. The Muslims have not eaten or drank since sunrise. This is followed by a wonderful home-cooked meal provided by Mazhar, her husband Hamid, and the Batavia Islamic Center. Mazhar and Hamid are active in the community and attract a diverse crowd of Christians, Jews, Sikhs, and perhaps some non-believers. Other churches in Batavia are invited. Local government officials often attend, including Mayor Jeff Shilk and the police and fire chiefs. Volunteers from the Congregational Church of Batavia provide the cleanup after dinner, while the Muslims have one more call for prayer that day. As it states on the invitation to the event, we all from different traditions pursue the same goals, that of cultivating human goodness and bringing comprehensive understanding, respect for other traditions, and happiness to all humans. But this church is not the only example of interfaith celebration. Another example of such a gathering is the annual Interfaith Ramadan Iftar organized by the Islamic Society of North America, ISNA, and held at its headquarters in Plainfield, Indiana. The event is open to people of all faiths and aims to promote understanding and dialogue between different religious communities. Yet another event is the Abrahamic Reunion Initiative, which brings together Jewish, Muslims, and Christian religious leaders from the Holy Land to promote peace and coexistence through dialogue and shared spiritual practices. The group organizes interfaith events, including joint prayers, shared meals, and cultural exchanges to foster understanding and build relationships between members of different faith communities. Closer to home, the Multi-Faith Association of South Australia, MASA, organizes a yearly Feast of Faiths event that brings together members of different faith communities, including Muslims, to share in each other's traditions and promote understanding and harmony. The event features music, dance, food, and storytelling from different faith traditions, and attendees are encouraged to engage in dialogue and ask questions about each other's beliefs and practices. In 2021, Easter, Passover, and Ramadan converged and a unique event was carried out, Chicago's Interfaith Trolley Ride. This tour took riders through the city's south side and stopped at sacred places in Hyde Park and Kenwood, including mosques, churches, and synagogues. Hosts and participants discussed interfaith work happening. In 2022, for the first time ever, an interfaith iftar took place at the Tower of London. This had never happened before in the landmark's 900 years history. This event was organized by the Nas Legacy Foundation, a charity that aims to build networks between diverse groups. They lay a strong emphasis on youth and politics. Notable guests at this event were Sadiq Khan, the mayor of London, and Imam Muhammad Mahmoud. The Tower of London was chosen for significant reasons, expressed by Imam Muhammad. This tower has stood in the city for almost a millennium, and for most of that time has been a symbol of power, both just and unjust. A symbol of death and destruction. And yet here we are today, a symbol of tolerance, togetherness, and solidarity. How times change slowly. The Nas Legacy has also previously organized such events at Lambeth Palace and St. Paul's Cathedral, which included guests such as the Imam of East London Mosque, Roman Catholic Cardinal Vincent Nichols, the Chief Rabbi Ephraim Mirvis, the Chaplain to the Speaker of the House of Commons Rev. Patricia Hillis, 
and the Anglican Bishop of Williston, Lusa Sengagoy. And there's some more good news. This year there has been a spectacular light display in central London, in celebration of Ramadan. Central London, which lights up every year during Christmas, has this time illuminated to celebrate the holy month in the UK. Around 30,000 lights have been used to form 61 moons. According to Sadiq Khan, the mayor of London has expressed with pride that this is a soul-warming example of how the capital city is celebrating diversity. These examples demonstrate the growing interests and efforts towards building bridges of understanding and respect between different faith communities. While there may still be differences and disagreements between people of different faiths, the common desire for peace and mutual respect can bring us together and help us find ways to live and work together in harmony. It's worth noting that interfaith gatherings and dialogue are not just important for building relationships between different faith communities, but also for countering the negative stereotypes and misconceptions that can exist between them. Through dialogue and shared experiences, we can begin to break down these barriers and foster greater understanding and empathy for one another. This is why events like the Iftar dinners hosted by the Congregational Church of Batavia are so important. By opening their doors and inviting their Muslim neighbors to share in a meal and conversation, they're creating an opportunity for people to connect and build relationships based on mutual respect and understanding. Such initiatives can go a long way in building stronger and more resilient communities. As we move forward, it's important to continue promoting interfaith dialogue and understanding, and to encourage initiatives that bring people of different faiths together. By working towards common goals and building relationships based on trust and respect, we can create a better future for ourselves and for generations to come. May Allah guide us all towards Him. We hope you enjoyed today's video. Let us know in the comments below if there are any interfaith gatherings happening in your areas, and what are your thoughts about such events? We would love to hear your feedback as it helps us create more content for you to enjoy. Don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. Guys, this was amazing. I feel the internet has actually helped a lot. For us to understand other people's vision and know where they're coming from, for us to see resources and information and we consume it or make our choice out of it. I believe that without the internet, I don't really think I will understand the Islamic religion. I won't even know what it stands for because where I am, I, I, where I am, or where I've been, I don't think I had cross paths with Muslims. Really? Yes, yeah. I haven't. I know some Muslims, but we don't talk. I just know they are Muslim, but. Yeah. Like, I haven't had this kind of close relationship with Muslims until I came to school. Then I saw some Muslims, then it kind of sparked my interest. The, the day I saw Farouk, and did I knew what Muslim was? Last year, January uh. And I was like, why are you not in church for close overnight? And he was like, I'm Muslim. And you were shocked. I was shocked. <laughs> But his name you, is Farouk. How do you feel? Like, how do you feel being Muslim? Like, I forget the name. Like, I thought Farouk is Farouk. I never thought. But sometimes I just wonder how does it really feel like. Like, there are not much Muslims in our school. So, yes. him being around a lot of yes. Christians, it's. I can't. Mm. But either yeah. way, I feel this is so nice because. You get to interact with them yeah. and then they get to ask you questions they don't understand. Maybe things they've heard from outside. And but I feel this is going to be kind of annoying sometimes because you're gonna, maybe you came there with 20 Muslims and 50 Christians. Then maybe you see some Muslims converted to Christian or some Christians converted to Muslims. So no, I don't, I don't, back, yeah. like, I don't I think, like I don't think, happen. no, no, I don't think there'll be a conversion. I just feel like it will be more of, I, I heard this about your religion, nah. tell me more or something. Yes, and you clarify the person and the person will be like, wait, this was wrong. I thought you guys believe they clarify the person. person be like, the person be like, oh, I, I want feel to I'm not in the right path. I ha I won't fully. But the person will convert immediately. The person yeah, will still should. calm down, and because this person has come all sense. the way, yeah. this person is like deep down in their religion, but they still want to know about this thing they've heard about your own religion. But then you know, then they'll be like, "Oh wow, so this is how it is." Then they will now go back to think about yeah. it. It's true. They won't convert immediately. 
Well, guys, tell me what you think about this. Let's just like, just got our channel. We'll see you next time, guys. Yes.